The year was 1994, NASA had been flying the space shuttle for the past 14 years. Although the shuttle was originally designed to be fully reusable, costs per launch have been gradually increasing since its first flight in 1981. With heavy refurbishment of the orbiter and boosters came unexpected costs that would increase the price of a space shuttle launch to $450 million according to NASA. However, NASA has stated in 2011 that the total cost of the space shuttle program had reached $192 billion over its 30-plus year service life. This brought the average cost per launch of the space shuttle to $1.5 billion. Much higher of a price than NASA would like to admit. Thus, the idea of a fully reusable vehicle was born. In early 1994, NASA Administrator Daniel S. Golden initiated the reusable launch vehicle program to pave the way to full-scale, commercially developed, reusable launch vehicles reaching orbit in one stage. The goals of the program were to demonstrate technologies leading to a new generation of space boosters capable of significantly lowering cost, and to provide a technology base for development of advanced commercial launch systems that will make U.S. aerospace manufacturers more competitive in the global market. From this, the X-33 was born. NASA had received proposals through 1996 from McDonnell Douglas, Rockwell International, and Lockheed Martin to develop the X-33 launch vehicle. The design proposal from McDonnell Douglas featured liquid oxygen and hydrogen bell engines based on its DCXA test vehicle. It used a single space shuttle main engine, or RS-25 for its main propulsion system. Meanwhile the design from Rockwell was a shuttle-derived vehicle which used one RS-25 and two RL-10 engines. NASA took their time in deciding which proposal to go with, but in the end, the decision wasn't too difficult. Finally, on July 2, 1996, NASA selected Lockheed Martin to design, build, and fly the X-33 Advanced Technology Demonstrator by December of 1999. Stemming from the funding and research of the X-33, Lockheed Martin had plans to upscale the X-33 into a fully reusable single-stage-to-orbit launch vehicle called the Venture Star. NASA was looking to the private industry to operate and develop the RLV and would purchase launch services from them. Administrator Golden said that NASA's goal for the RLV program quickly shifted to reducing costs from $10,000 per pound of payload, to $1,000 per pound. The X-33 demonstration vehicle was not only about honing spaceflight technologies, but also about successfully demonstrating the technology required to make a commercial RLV possible. So what were those technologies needed to be tested? Let's take a dive right into them. Since no other launch vehicle had attempted to do what the X-33 dreamed of, NASA wanted Lockheed Martin to vigorously test the X-33 in flight. The uncrewed X-33 vehicle was slated to fly 15 suborbital hops to a near 76.8 kilometers in altitude, then glide back down to Earth to land on a runway. The X-33 demonstration vehicle was never intended to fly more than an altitude of 100 kilometers, nor faster than one half of orbital velocity. The next-generation technologies that Lockheed Martin needed to demonstrate in these test flights included a new metallic thermal protection system, composite cryogenic hydrogen fuel tanks, the newly developed XRS-2200 linear aerospike engine from Aerojet Rocketdyne, autonomous-slash-uncrewed flight control, rapid turnaround times through streamlined operations, and the lifting body aerodynamics. These were the main components that needed to be proven successful for an RLV to be feasible. The X-33 would also attempt to demonstrate a 0.997 reliability factor, or three mishaps out of 1,000 launches. This would make the X-33 in order of magnitude more reliable than the space shuttle. Since there is no need for extra rocket stages, the reliability of the system increases overall. Compared to the space shuttle which utilized two five-segment solid fuel boosters which once ignited, the astronauts on board had no choice but to ride out the boosters, increasing the likelihood of failure to the launch system. From 1996 through 1999, NASA had invested nearly $1 billion on development of the X-33 RLV. With the first flight of the test vehicle planned for late 1999, problems had begun to arise. In November of 1999, Lockheed Martin and NASA engineers planned to pressure test its newly developed composite liquid hydrogen fuel tank. The tank was constructed of honeycomb composite walls and internal structures to reduce weight. A lighter-than-normal tank was needed to demonstrate necessary technologies for SSTO flight operations. 
The hydrogen-fueled SSTO craft's mass fraction requires that the weight of the vehicle without fuel be 10% of the fully fueled weight. This significant reduction in weight allows a spacecraft to fly into low Earth orbit without the need for solid rocket motors or extra stages. During the test, the composite liquid hydrogen exploded, leaving engineers and executives at Lockheed Martin discouraged. NASA and Lockheed Martin stated that while the composite fuel tank was lighter, the odd shape of the tank resulted in the need for complex joints which in turn increased the total mass above that of an aluminum-based tank. Because of the tank failure and a long series of technical difficulties ranging from flight instability to excess weight problems, NASA concluded that the technology at the time was simply not advanced enough for such a design. NASA ceased funding of the X-33 in early 2001. At the time of cancellation, Lockheed Martin's X-33 prototype was 85% assembled with 96% of the parts, and the launch facility was fully completed. After NASA had ceased funding, Lockheed Martin came to the conclusion that continuing development of the X-33 privately without government support would not be profitable, so they cancelled the X-33 and the Venture Star program altogether. Perhaps one of the biggest advancements from the program came from Aerojet Rocketdyne in the XRS-2200 linear aerospike engine, which was to be used on the X-33 and Venture Star launch vehicles respectively. The experimental aerospike engine was developed in the 90s for Lockheed Martin's RLV design. It was a gas generator cycle engine with a tested thrust of 909 kN of thrust at sea level, and 1,184 kN in a vacuum. The XRS-2200 was able to provide 339 seconds of specific impulse at sea level and up to 439 seconds in a vacuum. Being the ideal engine for an SSTO craft, the linear aerospike engine was first developed in the 1960s. The XRS-2200 was based primarily on a linear aerospike modified J-2 engine. In fact, the design used many of the J-2 components, including the combustion cycle and turbo pump machinery. The X-33 planned to utilize two of these subscaled XRS-2200 aerospike engines, while the Venture Star planned to use seven engines. Soon after cancellation of the X-33 program, engineers were able to make a working liquid oxygen fuel tank made out of carbon fiber composite. Subsequent tests proved that carbon composite material was feasible for use in cryogenic fuel tanks. Later, less than three years after the cancellation by Lockheed Martin, engineers from NASA and Northrop Grumman unveiled a first-of-its-kind liquid hydrogen fuel tank made of carbon fiber composite. This material had successfully demonstrated its ability to withstand repeated refuelings and simulated launch cycles. Needless to say, if NASA would have continued to fund the X-33 program for just three more years, breakthroughs in carbon composite technology would have allowed the X-33 to succeed and be implemented into Lockheed Martin's upscaled version, the Venture Star. We have no idea how the X-33 or Venture Star would have shaped today's aerospace industry. But we know one thing, the X-33 will always be NASA's biggest, what if? The X-33 was simply too advanced for its time, and it is pretty sad to think it was early by just three years. That is the story of the X-33, how an ambitious design can go through so much testing, but one single error can prove to be fatal for the program. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.